Signor Cinzano Bianco, signora. Thank you. Ah, yes. Gracias. Ah, due. No, 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 no. My Mr. Cinzano as well. Ah, oh, that's better. Oh, can't you just smell those Italian wines? Suffused with herbs and spices from, from four continents. Why being boring? Oops, sorry. Sorry. All right. I'm getting your head down, sweetie. Jolly good idea. From the house of Cinzano, Cinzano Bianco. That was Joan Collins and Leonard Rossiter in a classic advert from the 1970s. We'll be seeing them again later in AdFab, along with many more of your favourite adverts. Some people say that British television is the best in the world. It might even be true. But there's one area where no one questions that British is best, the commercials. We've come a long way since Lord Reith classed TV adverts with smallpox and the Black Death. You're about to see a collection of classic British commercials, a reminder of those moments between programmes that are often better than the programmes themselves. There are contributions from Clive Dunn, Robert Powell, Dick Emery, Irene Handel, Kenneth Connor, Brian Cox, Michael Benteen, Sir Clement Freud, Warren Mitchell and a host of other actors and celebrities. And to start as we mean to go on, here's a selection of some of the funniest British adverts of the past 40 years. cigar called Hamlet, the mild cigar from Benson and Hedges. Soft, smooth, luxurious, the sensation of pure cream. Heck, you smell gorgeous tonight, pal. <sighs> Pamper yourself with Boddington's, the cream of Manchester. There's going to be a few of you out shearing this time, then. About 40, I'd reckon. Something for the ladies? Oh, yeah. Two bottles of sweet cherry, mate. Looks like we've overdone it with the sherry. Yeah. Australians wouldn't give a Castle Maine 4X for anything else. We all have fond memories of adverts that made us laugh or remind us of a particular time in our lives. And yet we very rarely get a chance to see them again. They're on daily for a year and then they're gone. Now we've dusted off some of the classics and collected them up for you. Many of the most memorable ads are part of a long-running series where we get to know the characters and where the advertiser succeeds in getting an image of their product locked in the public mind. It looks as if the famous Arthur is having a spot of bother with a little boy next door. Mind you, he's only got himself to blame, telling everyone about catamites, nice juicy liver and tasty gravy. Not to mention all those delicious vitamins, A, E, B1, B2, B12. And he must have said vitamins never tasted so good at least a hundred times. Next time he opens his mouth, perhaps he'd be better off just putting his foot in it. Catomeat, vitamins never tasted so good. New Arthur's Choice Cuts. Delicious meaty pieces in golden jelly. Cut! And action. New Arthur's Choice Cuts. Delicious Cut. meat. Action. New Arthur's. 37. New Cut. 56. Arthur. Oh, All right, let's set up the product shop while we've got some tins left. I think he was doing it on purpose. New Arthur's Choice Cuts. Delicious meaty pieces in golden jelly. Cut. The original Arthur first came to Spiller's attention when the owner contacted them about Arthur's remarkable ability to eat cat food with his paw. 
Arthur then spent the rest of his life being lovingly cared for by Spillers, who bought the cat and housed him in expensive catteries between recording sessions. He lived for 14 years, and even after his death in 1977, Arthur remained the number one name for white kittens. Another furry creature forever identified with its product is the Duracell Bunny. Duracell, with its unique titanium technology, lasts much longer than ordinary zinc batteries. Duracell, with unique titanium technology. Get in the hang of it, Minder oh, oh, Bannister's son. Oh, I can't hold it, Dad. Don't worry, son. I shifted more oh. pianos than you've had up dinners. Cream, cream, Mr. Shifter. Like refreshment. Oh, thank you most kindly, madam. Oh. One way of shifting it. When a good cup of tea really counts, you're right to drink Brook Barn PG oh, yeah, Tips. It's the tea you can really taste. Dad, do you know the pianos on my foot? You am it, son. I'll pay it. It can take 50 times as long to shoot an advert with chimps instead of human actors. In the advert you've just seen, the chimp who was supposed to play the piano refused to cooperate with the dummy keyboard on the set and would only perform when they brought in a real piano. You might, by the way, have recognised the voices of Irene Handel, John Junkin, Kenneth Connor and Robert Lang. The PG Tips chimp adverts began in 1956 and are the longest running campaign in British advertising history. Another very popular and long-running campaign, but one that no longer appears on television, was put out by Hamlet Cigars. Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet, the mild cigar. Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet, the mild cigar. Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet, the mild cigar. Advertisers are always drawing inspiration from each other and from anything that catches the public imagination. They're a vital part of popular culture. The Andrex puppy has been as familiar an icon as Arnold Schwarzenegger. We shouldn't be surprised. Some of the top advertising directors are also feature film directors. Alan Parker, Ridley and Tony Scott and Hugh Hudson, director of Chariots of Fire. All of them cut their teeth in British advertising before becoming internationally famous film directors. Here's what Hugh Hudson has to say about the relationship between adverts and feature films. Feature films and uh, other art forms have always influenced advertising. They always try to emulate feature films. Constantly, it's always been, ever since I've been in it, it still goes on today. It's always copying feature films. Uh, the reverse, uh, the public, because they're now fed on uh, the kind of uh, stuff on television, like MTV and, and that kind of material, are expect a different kind of um, uh, pace and style from their, from, uh, from their, uh, you know, from their theatrical entertainment. And therefore, they're able to assimilate something which is, you know, which has a, has a greater, um, speed, uh, which uh, uh, deals out information in a faster way, which is uh, what films are doing today. So advertising has influenced that. People are, t are able to accept it quicker.
Super Trinitron wide. Be careful what you watch. I thought it would be very amusing to try and get, go through a life on a sofa in 30 seconds. Um, what was key to that was the music, I think. As soon as we found the music, it went through at such a pace, uh, we were able to get through a lifetime <laughs> in a very short amount of time. Uh, yeah, a very simple idea. I think the best ideas are simple. The whole secret of doing commercials, I think, is uh, being able to write something that works in a short period of time. Uh, very often uh, you get feature filmmakers coming in trying to do commercials and their biggest problem is trying to condense everything to a short amount of time. Well that's the art of it. Um, and the best commercials work very well in that very short amount of time. You see, I was standing outside my mouse hole the other day when all of a sudden along comes this cat. So quick as a flash, I turned into a dog. A rough, rough. But the cat turned into a dragon. Wow. So I turned into a fire engine. How's that? <laughs> and then, and then he turned into a submarine. So I became a submarine eating kipper. I said a kipper, not a slipper. Thank you very much. <laughs> but he turned into an anti kipper ballistic missile. So I turned into a missile cruncher. Crunch, 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 crunch. Just in time to see him change into a very, very big elephant. So do you know what I did then? I turned back into a mouse and I gave him the threat of his life. Just like that. <laughs> I don't suppose you have a copy of Fly Fishing by J.R. Hartley. It is rather old. It's by J.R. Hartley. No luck, Dad. Never mind. There's still a few more to try. Good old yellow pages. We don't just help with the nasty things in life, like a blocked drain. We're there for the nice things, too. You do? Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, can you keep it for me? My name, oh yes, it's J.R. Hartley. That Yellow Pages commercial was so successful that a book actually called Fly Fishing by J.R. Hartley was published. The advert achieved what every advertising writer and director wants. It entered the public consciousness. As did the series of adverts with which we began this video, the Chinsano commercials featuring Leonard Rossiter and Joan Collins. The series was begun by Alan Parker, director of fame and the commitments, and then taken over by Hugh Hudson. Chinsano is a good little story, 30 second story, set in, you know, a sort of little joke, 
that goes on each time between two characters, which were on ongoing characters, which we got to know and got to like, and were amused by, and where the the writer, the director, and the actors combine to make something which is which works. That's what uh, making a, a little film or a big film is about. Do, 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 do. Ah, excellent, eh? Hey, there's this. He's on a dry, oh, Haven't seen this in a long time. <laughs> Have they done it again, we ask ourselves? <laughs> oh, mais oui. Oh, a new, light, sophisticated, dry drink that is quintessentially... dry. Oh, pity Melissa isn't here. You'd enjoy this. New Cinzano Dry, the dry Cinzano. Uh, I was I liked working with those particular actors. I mean, they were uh, they were a joy, especially Leonard, um, who sadly not is not with us anymore. But uh, he made them. He made them what they were. Uh, improvised and you know created the ads as we went along. Oh, Melissa, uh, Mr. Yakitori and his aides. Yoko so. Uh, no, no, sweetie, Japanese. Play this right, there's a scooter each. Oh, they just ordered our traditional drink, Shizano Bianco. Oh, a fusion of superb Italian wines and aromatic herbs. One of our most refined European customs. <laughs> oh. 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 I think they like you, Marissa. The Chinsano series was so successful that for a time there was even talk of the possibility of a feature film. Unfortunately, whilst the public loved them, they also often thought that the product being advertised was Martini, the brand leader at the time. What an advertiser is really looking for is product identification, to ensure that if you see an image or hear a note of music, you immediately think of their product. Last stop on round would be old Ma Peggotty's place. Twas like taking bread to the top of the world. Twas a grand ride back though. I knew Baker at Afcatlon and doorsteps of our always ready. There's wheat germ in that loaf, he'd say. Get it inside your boy, and you'll be going up that hill as fast as you come down. And I'm sure uh, Dvorak would turn in his grave if he knew his New World Symphony was uh associated with a loaf of bread, but there we are. He made a lot of money out of it. Perhaps that would have uh, <laughs> assuaged him. Always running out of bread, me mum was. Nip over to the shops quick, she say. Your dad'll be home soon, wanting his tea. The times I did that trip, I could have run a Brumman Ferry service. Channing the baker. If only they'd bake a bigger hobus, I wouldn't need to come so often. Finally, up we come with the goods. Twice as big as ordinary hobus, says he, and special for thee. But keep it to yourself, mind, and they'll all be wanting one. I would no more than knee eye to a grasshopper when I ran off from home. I packed up my marbles, my catapults, and my Orvis sandwiches, and off I went. I'd just stopped for a bite to eat when up comes postman. Am I in London yet? I asked him. <laughs> nay, nee, lad, he says. And if thou's thinking of legging it down there, thou'll need more Orvis butter than that to keep thee going. Come back with me, and we'll get thee out to make up a silk case full. Ovis still has many times more wheat germ than ordinary bread. It's as good for you today as it's always been. The early Hovis ads were made by Ridley Scott, who went on to direct the wonderful Blade Runner, Alien, and many other films. His skill as an art director, creating the feel and the mood, had an immediate impact, and his influence lives on today. To create the perfect loaf, you need a keen eye, an obsession for quality, meticulous attention to detail and above all five generations of baking experience Derek do we have to go through this rigmarole every time just throw it to the ducks Warburton's Baker's Born and Bred 
As Hugh Hudson pointed out earlier, some adverts borrow from feature films, often very directly, as when Heat Electric persuaded Nick Park to create a series of adverts inspired by his Oscar-winning short animated film, Creature Comforts. Oh, it's good to come back into a warm flat after you've just done a run, and it's always nice to come into somewhere warm if you've been freezing to death outside on a 10-mile slog. Yeah, it's easily controllable. Um, and it needs, it needs to be easily controllable as well because I don't have much time. I'm a very busy person, so I have to have everything just as I need it. Well, they, 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 sh they, sh they should be sort of fairly modern in design and they've got to be easily turned off and honourable. Before we got the dishwasher, the, this place was always a mess. There used to be dishes everywhere. Yes, waiting for somebody to come and clear it away. But we never had a magic wand, but we got a dishwasher. Yes, yeah, because it's a nice little slot, hasn't it? It has, it it's has. quite at home in there. It has. We were, in fact, we were going to get a wee door to put over the front of it, and then we thought, no, we will not. We'll let everybody see we've got a dishwasher. Make others do yeah. Well, we got it flaunted. It's bliss. Absolute bliss. You walk in, you get past the dog. Snoring his head off normally. You go in the lounge, you slob around for a bit. I mean, the whole house is warm. I had a flat once, it was freezing. And it's just lovely being here because you never have to worry about being cold. It's just like that all the time. And especially like you when know, you come in and you've been dancing all night and there's still plenty of hot water. The house is still lovely and warm, which is like unbelievable, really. And you get into bed and it's lovely and warm and you wake up in the morning and it's still nice and warm. I mean, you just don't want to go to work of a morning. For all your creature comforts, heat electric. Those are certainly great adverts, and the original creature comforts on which they were based was an Oscar-winning work of art. But can adverts themselves ever be works of art? Advertising is a craft. It, it's, not a, it's not art. Uh, it's there to serve a commercial purpose. And we borrow from art, uh, we borrow from... Um, from filmmaking, the great 20th century uh, um, uh, art form, and we borrow from uh, anybody who practices a, a visual uh, uh, or a verbal craft. But it will always be uh, a craft rather than a, a masterpiece of art. Well, I personally um, think art is at such a stage now that there's such a sort of crossover in all sorts of kind of mediums that uh, I do actually think some commercials are pieces of art. Now you see, if they were found 2,000 years from now, if somebody found um, a Tony Kay's Dunlop commercial in 500 years from now and didn't really know what it was, they wouldn't put it on and I don't think they'd go, oh yeah, that's a sort of Dunlop tyre ad, you know? And the same way as if somebody found an Andy Warhol's uh, Marilyn Monroe or Andy Warhol's self-portrait Polaroids, I think they'd know that this isn't like just a, a photograph. There's something about it comes across that's not the norm. It's something that makes you look at things as if so far you've lived on the moon. And anything that does that to me is art, because that's what art's meant to do, is to make you look at things again, everyday things in a different light. Classifies as an art form, I think is, I think is pretentious. Actually, I think a lot of people in advertising who are advertising directors are very pretentious, and they think you know they're, they're, um, you know they're the bee's knees just because they make good ads.
or ads. They, you know, they're a part of commerce. Adverts may or may not be art, but they can be great television. Here's a selection from one of the most famous and entertaining campaigns of all time. what your other beers can't reach. Ah, uh, yeah? Guess we'll see about that. Anything happening, Jess? You can't believe all the tell you on the TV. There ought to be a law against that sort of thing. Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet, the mild cigar. Heineken refreshes the parts that other beers cannot reach. It's a slogan we're all familiar with, but if the campaign was starting today, it wouldn't be allowed. Like the famous Hamlet adverts, it gets dangerously close to suggesting that all you have to do is drink this beer or smoke that cigar and everything will be all right. But the rules are not the only things that have tightened up over time. Advertising was very different in the past. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Weathers can't be disturbed. She's being interviewed by the press. Thanks, Miss Withers, for giving us such a splendid story for our school newspaper. But now, can you tell us off the record how a girl can become glamorous? Well, I can't promise you glamour. But I think that a girl with a soft and clear complexion is always very attractive. Here's one of my beauty secrets. Lux toilet soap. It's so mild and gentle. Look how white it is the whitest soap of all. Purity itself. This is the way to a lovely complexion for you both. Googie Withers, like nine out of ten other film stars, entrusts her loveliness to pure white luxe toilet soap. It's the beauty care of the most beautiful women on earth. When you're five and new at school, you get free milk every day. Milk builds bones. Milk toughens growing bodies. And it's free, until you're 11. 
If you're 12 or older, there's no free school milk anymore. But you're still growing, you still need lots of milk. So what's the answer? If there's no free milk at school, are you giving them extra at home? See they get enough milk, Mum. Enzo Ferrari, Italy's greatest name in motoring, has been discussing motor oils with me. Senior Ferrari, why do you use Shell? My faith in Shell springs from my experience, first as a racing driver, then as a director of the Ferrari racing team, and finally as a car manufacturer. Thirteen world championships have been the result of this happy association with Shell. The oil Shell develops for Ferrari is the oil Shell develops for you. You've read in your paper how Shell tests their oil, now try it for yourself, for the good of your car. Go well, go Shell Oil. When your child was still at primary school, he got the bodybuilding nourishment of milk at school free. But remember, there's no free milk at secondary school. Now their milk is up to you, Mum. It's tingling fresh. It's fresh as ice. It's Gibbs SR toothpaste. The tingling fresh toothpaste that does your gums good too. The tingle you get when you brush with SR is much more than a nice taste. It's a tingle of health. It tells you something very important, that you're doing your gums good and toughening them to resist infection. And as this chart shows, gum infection is the cause of more tooth losses than decay itself. The tingle in SR comes from sodium ricinoleate, a substance which both dental research and years of use in dental practice have shown to be good for the gum. So, to keep your teeth white as snow, your gums really healthy, and your breath really fresh, see your dentist regularly and brush with SR, the tingling fresh toothpaste for teeth and gums. Gibbs SR. New colored Lux. Yes, now there's green Lux, pink Lux, yellow, and blue Lux, as well as pure white Lux. Not one color, but five to choose from. Fragrant Lux, beauty care of the stars. So good for your complexion. In matching foil, green, pink, yellow, blue, and white Lux in golden foil. Lux for you. Love makes their world a happy world, and it shows. It shows in the warmth of a mother's smile. It shows in the way she sees her family as comfortable and cared for. It shows in the fact that she gets Purcell to look after their clothes, because she knows that Purcell gets things just that important bit whiter. Purcell is kind to her hands. It copes with the biggest family wash. Purcell is thorough, it washes whiter, and it shows. There are as many types of advert as there are types of programme. Some are comedies, some are dramas, or action movies, or even musicals. This next selection demonstrates just how varied good advertising can be. to buy bye's and my dinner's getting cold and it's granddad's favourite. It's me walls, his bangers. Yeah. No, come on, come on. Up to Daisy. You watch me make these lovely meaty walls sausages disappear. Nom, nom, nom. What a little piecey we see. There we are. Granddad cut it up for you. Yeah. With all that prime porky porky inside you, you're going to grow up strong and handsome like your granddad. Not too much now. <laughs> Mommy! Oh, it's my dinner! Wall sausages, made with prime porky walkie.
Istanbul. Mosques, minarets, and mayhem. The beautiful and, of course, the bizarre. Should you want turkey and all the trimmings, make sure you pack a Barclay car. Pick up the kind of hooker you can take home to mother. Thank you very much. And no doubt you'll want some slippers to go with your pipe. Yes, even here in Turkey, Barclay card is welcome, but thousands more places than certain charge cards I can mention. Ow! Oh! It'll even stretch to a little Turkish delight. For details, dial 100 and ask for free phone Barclay card. Today is the second anniversary of his operation, so I thought we'd celebrate. I went and bought some Aberdeen Angus beef marinated it overnight in olive oil, crushed garlic, and chateau bottled claret. And this morning I cut it into strips, dusted it with flour and paprika, fried it in butter, added some cream. He hated it. Said he wanted this, um, stuff. New chunky meat. Only the crumbliest, flakiest chocolate Tastes like chocolate never tasted before For many people, that advert is one of the most erotic on television. For others, it's just funny, although not perhaps as deliberately so as this next selection of classic adverts. Oh, won't you stay? There's a cream that helps you stay in the sun just a little bit longer. Blimey, you could stay here as long as you like, Chuck. Hey, Vera, you fancy a top-up, love? Eh? Hey? Ooh, not half. And give us another rub down with that chip fan. Boddington's, the cream of Manchester. I'd like a drink, please. I want to make sure it's cold. Well, will there be anything else, sir? No, thank you. I want. Um, I like a, a lot of humour in uh, commercials, or I like a completely <clears throat> surrealistic approach to it. <clears throat> I mean, the thing is, I think most people aren't stupid and they sort of will buy stuff that they really want or that they really like the taste of. I mean, you don't, I don't think a lot of people go out and buy a Jaffa cake because when they don't really like the taste of it, but the ad's really good. I um, don't really know about that. Probably children probably do, like, you know, really want to buy certain little things because there's a little man that runs across the screen and he really likes him, you know. But um, I personally, um, I wouldn't go dashing out to buy something just because the, the ad was great. But if you're going to have something in between, you know, TV commercials, I mean, if you're going to have TV commercials at all, I'm glad that some people go to the bother of making them uh, interesting. Hello there, all you John Smith's drinkers. Yes, it's treat time again. 30 mouth-watering seconds to look at the great stuff itself. And today, for all those of you who like a bit of romance with their films, watch out for the naughty scene. To demonstrate the incredible sticking power of new instant mix solvite, we've devised a, a little test. 
Morning, George. But first, let me introduce you to the judges. Yesterday, using new Solvite, we pasted these overalls to this board. Today, Solvite's current general manager, Terry Edwards, has more than his job hanging on the outcome. Let it go, George. <coughs> new Solvite Instant Mix Wallpaper Adhesive. Smoother, quicker, and, as George will tell you, now even stronger. Humour has been part and parcel of British advertising since it began, and many of our most famous character actors have taken part in short humorous sketches designed to sell us something. Now the thing about these new cars, sir, is the high compression. Now I know what you're going to say, sir. What's this got to do with Super Shell? It's a very good question. Yes, it is a very good question, sir. Yes. Uh, now take this high compression. You see, the high compression, how shall I put it, that means that the compression itself is... It's high. I beg your pardon? It's high. Which is why I repeat, you must use Super Shell with ICA. But I always do. <laughs> so do I. Well, naturally, we all do. <laughs> <laughs> Tick, this is your pistol. What? This is Tick, that is your pistol, sir. Oh. Now, on top of it is the cylinder head. Now, what's this? <laughs> Deposit. Exactly. <laughs> he knows, you know. And that's where the ICA comes in. Obviously, it's going to pre-ignite on account of the heat. What we call pre-ignition. Yes, but ICA cures this. But I leave all these technicalities to you, expert. Ah, but the most important thing about Super Shell is... What? It's the, the real wet stuff for cars. <laughs> it was not easy to find, but for a man's last breakfast... Yes, yes. The leaves will be falling in Berkshire now. Delicate golden flakes, full of sunshine and the taste of summer. Cool, refreshing. Ah, that taste. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Cool, crisp, irresistible. Uh, Monsieur Ferro, I have a small problem with the free-range chickens you sold me. Pourquoi? I can't actually find them. Les poulets? Mais oui, les poulets avec les fluffy brown feathers. Ici. Ici. Oh, it has not been easy! Oh, no, no, no. Ici. 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 When you use S.O. Gold, then you feel you're driving a better car. And you are. Call up the S.O. sign for S.O. Golden. Golden. Senior Buffer was voiced by the late Dick Emery and was one of the most popular characters SO used to sell their petrol. Even in these old adverts, you can see the beginnings of what made British advertising special. But just what is it that makes British adverts the best in the world? I think part of the secret of British advertising is that uh, we have never taken kindly to salesmen. We don't like salesmanship. Uh, we're far too good mannered. Whereas in the States, for example, salesmanship is what it's all about. It's part of selling your way to the American dream. So in the UK, what we've had to do is find uh, perhaps more subtle approaches, uh, perhaps disarm you with humor, uh, and get in under your guard in that way. And that's spawned a whole succession, certainly over the last 20 years, of uh, 
uh, humorous, quirky, uh, and, in, and inventive ways in which to make a sale without appearing to be selling at all. I mean, the thing is, commercials are there, you know, they're always going to be there because people have to say what there is for sale and what the choice is. And I'm really pleased that Britain actually takes some time and is really quite hip as far as those kind of things go. I mean, people who've never been to America wouldn't believe, you know, what happens on the TV there or in Italy and various other places. You know, Italy's got a lot of style in lots of different ways, but some of the commercials are ridiculous. Hello? No, this is 4724. That's quite all right. Humour is part and parcel uh, of making the audience like you. And if the audience likes you, they are more likely to buy something from you. And you can go down any street market and you will see the traders with the personalities that are likeable. Uh, they're more likely to draw the crowds. And that's why humour can often work. Like your new dog art, right? Here, boy. Up, up. Down. Sit. Feel. Don't do much, does he? Fancy a drop of John Smith's? He just needs the right motivation. John Smith's Bitter, a tough act to follow. The Arkwright adverts are some of the best and funniest ever produced. But how does a series like that come to be created? It was inspired by... Um, uh, a series of programmes at the time called I Didn't Know You Cared which uh, were very Yorkshire humour and very amusing and I tried to capture some of that in, in the campaign and uh, we must have written about 15 of them over the years with these two characters and it was, it was a happy uh, mix we happened to cast a guy who was absolutely perfect um, and he, his character fitted with the script perfectly. Everything meshed together. Uh, and the whole campaign was shot very simply uh, because the idea was it was a very straightforward pint of beer, flat cap, Yorkshireman, down to earth, pragmatic. So everything was shot in a very simple way. And it had a style and a wit that uh, was sustainable over all that time. <laughs> He's out right in. He's out? Do you know where he is? Just a minute, I'll look at his caps. His work caps here. His football caps here. His John Smith's caps here. His fishing caps missing. His fishing. When it comes to John Smith's Yorkshire bitter, never judge a person by appearances. The Arkwright adverts were very simple. They didn't rely on expensive sets or special effects, yet they're widely regarded as amongst the best ever made. Other adverts can cost millions of pounds to make. How does the advertiser decide how big a production a campaign should be? For me, the idea uh, is what counts. The idea is, uh, is persuasive or it isn't. The execution will always follow the idea, and sometimes uh, an idea demands half a million pounds to be spent against it just to realise that piece of film. Sometimes the idea only needs £50,000 and uh, if you just follow that basic pre principle which is the idea dictates the amount of money that should be spent on it then you can't go far wrong. Jesse, look at the horses. Watch how they keep their heads still. Their feet barely touch the ground like it's on fire. Watch how they keep their heads still. Watch how they keep their rhythm. This advice from his coach won Jesse Owens four gold medals in the 1936 Olympics. And while the training and preparation is a little different today, the spirit of Jesse Owens will be running in Donovan Bailey's shoes in Atlanta.
I think any ad is a, uh, a challenge to write. And the reason I think that is because no, no matter how easy you think it might be to start off with, you, you, you're constructing something like a, it's like the Japanese poems called haikus. They're only four lines long and they have to have immense, uh, they have to contain immense human experience or a very profound thought. Uh, and when you sit down to write an ad and you've got a blank sheet of paper, uh, you've got to distill uh, the essence of a brand uh, you, and uh, you have to put uh, some of the features of that uh, brand uh, and the message of that brand into, what, 30 seconds of film? Or in some cases, uh, just a press ad. Every ad is difficult to write. A strange thing. You, you try and describe what uh, advertising agencies do for a living to people outside of the industry and, and it would seem essentially very trivial, uh, which I suppose it is. Uh, but it also is a, a, a very difficult process. There was a, a writer called George Axelrod who once said, writing isn't difficult, you just sit at the typewriter uh, and concentrate until beads of blood form on your forehead and drip onto the paper. And he's right. An event seen from one point of view gives one impression. Seen from another point of view, it gives quite a different impression. But it's only when you get the whole picture you can fully understand what's going on. I like sometimes being under that restriction. I mean, a pop song's like a restriction. I mean, you know, if you think most pop songs last three minutes, 30 or four minutes, otherwise the radio won't play them and all that stuff. And in some ways, that's a terrible thing. In some ways, it's a great thing, because you've got to say what you mean in that short space of time. And uh, it's, that's quite interesting. Because you can't talk, because you can't walk, because your mother has only got one pair of hands, because you're wonderful, except when you're hungry, because you woke your mother six times last night, because you hate shopping, because of all these things, at Tesco, we'll give you somewhere to get changed, your own custom-made trolley, and we'll even warm your milk for you. Tesco. Every little helps. At Volkswagen, when we launch a new car, we like to drop it. But because this new Polo is so solid, we thought we'd really drop it. It's spacious, aerodynamic. There's a five-door model for those family outings. Power steering. But above all, this is the safest polo we've ever built. With optional twin airbags. Fortunately. ABS brakes. The new Volkswagen Polo. The original cornflakes and still the best. Golden, fresh, crispy, tasty. Kellogg's cornflakes. Crispy, tasty, wakey, wakey, wakey. Should you find yourself with a wobbly wheel, 
We'll transfer you and your groceries to a new trolley, instantly. Tesco, every little helps. Often the most expensive adverts are those which put the emphasis not on words but on visual images. The budgets for these adverts can be greater than for some feature films. Fiat's use of Figaro from the Barber of Seville demonstrates how well advertising and music can work together. The two are so closely linked that there have even been albums released featuring just the bits of classical music used as background for adverts. Sometimes, however, the advert comes first and the music second, which is what happened with former Eurythmics star Dave Stewart's groundbreaking advert, Secrets, for British Telecom. Secrets, the, the BT ad, was a very unusual approach to making an ad. Um, Tom Carty and Walter Campbell uh, came along with Tony Kay and talked about an idea of doing an ad where the, the actual product didn't appear in it at all, you know, in any you know, written form or any voiceover. It was just all about phone boxes and people's isolation and uh, teenagers' need to communicate sometimes outside of the house, away from their parents to their girlfriends or whatever. And the way phone boxes when I was a a kid, you know, people would use them to meet in and things like that. And um, they asked if I had a song or I could write a song expressing this kind of feeling um, of um, wanting to say something without anybody else overhearing. 
and so I came up with the song Secrets, which is <coughs> um, then I wrote the song about something very personal. So it's a peculiar thing, really. I'm sort of singing this very personal song, and then Tony K shot the ad with me in phone boxes around the world, and um, also then phone boxes in swimming pools and phone boxes halfway up a building and on a crane, and made this cinema campaign, which I had loads of people come up to me in the street and still say, God, that's a great sort of singer. How did you manage to get your single on the cinema? And I'm saying, well, it's not, it's an ad. Most music written for commercials is in the form of jingles. These little tunes are designed to stick in your mind, even if you don't want them to. Yes, you say means happy motoring. Yes, you say means happy motoring. Yes, you say means happy motoring. Call it the yes, you say, mate, you. Or S-O-X-O. Sure, the yes, you say means happy motoring. Yes, you say means happy motoring. Yes, you say means happy motoring. Call it the yes, you say, be dad. The SO sign means happy motoring, SO sign means happy motoring, SO sign means happy motoring, call the SO sign the new for SO extra. Yes indeed, look here. The SO sign means happy motoring, SO sign means happy motoring, SO sign means happy motoring. So the next time we're in San Fast for Fingis, go get it when Robert Land is here, go go go. Call it the SO sign, isn't it? For SO extra. Call it the SO sign. Sorry, you just have to wait. I'm finishing me merriment. The too good to hurry mint. Merry mint, merry mint, too good to hurry mint. Why make haste when you can taste the hint of mint in merry mint? Merry mint, merry mint, too good to hurry mint. Merry mint, merry mint, too good to hurry mint. Delicious. Now to war. Treat yourself to merry mints, the too good to hurry mints with a delicious hint of mint. Murray mints, Murray mints, too good to hurry mints. These cows live on green, green grass. The little cow asks, why is our butter so great? We are lucky cows. We chew the cud and browse. Cause we're eating up our greens. It makes our butter taste and free. That last advert shows how sophisticated animation techniques have begun to play an increasingly important part in advertising. 
There are many different forms of animation, from cartoons to stop motion, and all of them are used in commercials. <laughs> Wasn't it worth getting up early to get a good view? And just view this princely cup of Tetley. A perfect match of fine teas and 2,000 perforations that let flavour flood out. Where's Sydney? It's not like him to miss a taste of history or a taste of Tetley. I'll get him down, lads. Time for the loyal toast, Sydney. Oh, Sydney. Tetley, make tea bags. Make tea. From nurses to park keepers, from librarians to meals on wheels. If you want to be heard, speak in unison. And there's another Lurpak Olympic gold winning score. I hope you've enjoyed this collection of classic British adverts. I know I have. Nothing evokes the feel of the past more than an old advert, and nothing is so capable of summing up the mood of a time. Looking back at these adverts is like looking back at our history. I can't wait to go back into the vaults and look for more of my favourites. The British advertising industry has been a breeding ground for talent and a source of some of the most potent images of the post-war era. It's one of the few areas where Britain is still a world leader, and here to complete this tour of classic adverts is a second look at some of my favourites. Like your new dog art, right? Here, boy. Up, up. Down. Sit. Feel. Doesn't do much, does he? Fancy a drop of John Smith's. <laughs> Just needs the right motivation. John Smith's bitter, a tough act to follow. Oh, it's good to come back into a warm flat after you've just done a run, and it's always nice to come into somewhere warm if you've been freezing to death outside on a ten-mile slog. Yeah, it's easily controllable, um, and it needs it needs to be easily controllable as well because I don't have much time. I'm a very busy person. So I have to have everything just as I need it. Well, they, 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 sh they, sh they should be sort of fairly modern in design and they've got to be easily turn off and honourable. For all your creature comforts, heat electric. Ah, Melissa! Uh, Mr Yakitori and his aides? Yokoso. Uh, no, no, sweetie, Japanese. Play this right, there's a scooter each. Ah, we just ordered our traditional drink. Shizano Bianco. Oh, a fusion of superb Italian wines and aromatic herbs. One of our most refined European customs. <laughs> oh. oh! I think they like you, Marissa. 